Okay, guys, uh, welcome to, to part two of uh, week three, checkpoint one. Uh, part one, I kind of discussed how to uh, to look over the requirements and, and come up with your, your IPO chart. Uh, for this part, I'm going to discuss the, uh, the flow chart uh, diagrams that are necessary, uh, the correct pseudocode <clears throat> that, that, that needs to be uh, submitted, and, and your, your test in, the table of test input values uh, that you also need to include uh, with the assignment. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and uh, let's bring back up my uh, my example. Uh, and so we're still we're still doing the fast food ordering system requirement here. Uh, the next part that's required uh, is is the flow charts. Uh, now flow charts are basically uh, a way to to represent the program at a very uh, high level. Uh, flow charts are are covered in your reading. Um, not very well, and there's also uh, plenty of resources uh, online documenting how to uh, create flowchart diagrams uh, for software. Uh, the, there is a, there is a standard, um, and and basically you guys are going to see uh, how these guys are created when I walk you through them here. Uh, so so something to note though is that every program requires a main module. That's just how uh, how all programs start up. Is is there is a a main module. So always make sure to include uh, a module in your flowchart and in your pseudocode. Uh, so what is this main module going to do? Well, the other thing to, to note about flowcharts is you always have a start and an end. And the start and the end is always represented uh, via an oval. Okay? And the way I came up, the way I came up with these flowchart uh, diagrams is within Microsoft Word itself, if you go up here uh, to the toolbar, there's this little uh, insert shapes guy, uh, and it's got all sorts of nifty little shapes here. Uh, but the, the the shapes that are very important to uh, to to flowchart diagrams are this diamond, which is conditional logic, and you guys are going to see that in a second. Uh, the arrow, which shows you uh, how how the state of the program uh, progresses, and you guys are going to see that. The the rectangle, which is uh, basically a high-level description of, of what is going on within the module uh, at that point. Uh, and, and in theory, what you should be able to do is to keep drilling down uh, in these rectangles uh, until, until you've basically reached the, 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 the really the, the, the fine the fine grain elements. And, and I'm going to show you guys what I, what I mean about that. Uh, so you're going to be using a bunch of these rectangles. Uh, and then we just talked about the oval and how that's used to represent uh, the start and the end. Okay, so when you're creating these flowchart diagrams in Word, um, I'm not sure, I think 2007 is very similar, it has this insert toolbar, and then you go to shapes. Uh, you know, those are the basic shape elements. You may also use, need to use this, this text box guy here uh, to label some of these arrows, because I don't believe you can uh, add text to... Uh, to these arrows, unfortunately, you need to add a text box. So for the main module, you know, what, what are we going to put in the main module? Well, it should basically call out what, what, you, what you found in your IP. So you're going to have your, your start condition. What's the first thing you're going to do? Well, go up to your IPO chart. You want to get the, the number of, of burgers ordered. So I created a, a, a state that says get number of burgers. Uh, once you've obtained the number of burgers from the user, and, and again, these flowcharts are at a high level, right? So you don't really need to get too descriptive. That's what the software engineer is going to do, is he's actually going to implement these, uh, these states. But you do need to be descriptive enough to where uh, the software engineer can look at this and implement the program, right? So let's let him know that we want to obtain the number of burgers. We're going to go ahead and calculate the total bill after we get those burgers, and then we're going to display the bill. And again, that's that's where uh, this IPO chart kind of ties in to flow charts, right? So now that we know what the main module does at a high level using our IPO chart and and the main module, um, let's let's drill down and and kind of take a look at this calculate total bill guy because that's this calculate total bill. Uh, it really needs to be its own uh, module because it's going to have a lot going on. So that's what I kind of did for the next. In theory, for all of your flowcharts, you're going to have a main module, and then you're going to have a module, uh, in theory, for all of, of these high-level states. So 
in theory, there's a get number numbers bur get number of burgers module. There's a calculate total bill module, and there's a display bill module. Uh, I'm only going to show you guys to calculate total bill module, um, and you're going to see why in a second. So let's let's kind of zoom in on this calculate total bill module guy. <clears throat> so within this calculate total bill module guy, you see the start state again, right? Uh, and the first state, the first thing we want to do is just calculate the total cost. What is the uh, the total cost of this bill going to be uh, without any of the discounts, without any of the service charge? Just go ahead and take your number of burgers and uh, multiply it by 399 because that's what it says uh, in the requirements, right? So the next thing we need to do though is once we calculate that total cost, is we need to look and see. Remember those conditions and the requirements. Is it greater than 20? Is it greater than 50? Or is it greater than 100? And this is what is called the conditional logic. So your diamond, your diamond shapes represent your, the conditional logic. And the reason they chose the diamond is because with conditions, conditions are either true or false, right? True or false. So if this condition is true, the flow is going to go this way, right? The computer is going to transfer control this way. If the if this condition is false, it's going to, to transfer control this way, right? So so by following the arrows, uh, you can kind of visually see uh, what what the computer does and kind of what the computer stores in each of, each of these variables. That's this is kind of the cool thing about flowcharts is that it it gives you a way to visually represent uh, each each of the steps involved. Uh, with with these different modules. So if total cost is greater than 20, uh, it's going to set up, oh, there's a bug, a 10% discount. If total cost is greater than 50, it should implement a 20% discount. And then if total cost is greater than 100, it's going to do a 30% discount. And the service charge is going to vary, right? And all, all, all of this, right, is I get that from the requirements. Just like you guys are going to have something very similar when you're calculating the total tax, uh, you're going to refer to Appendix G, and in Appendix G, you're going to see probably uh, I think five different options uh, that you're going to need to test for, and then uh, it, with each one of those conditions, you're going to have a kind of a true case uh, where you're going to set different variables uh, that are used towards the end of this module. And let me let me let me show you what I mean about that. So, so if total cost is greater than 20, we set discount to a specific amount. We set service charge to a specific amount. If it's greater than 50, if total cost is greater than 50, we set the discount and the service charge to, a, uh, to another unique uh, value, set in the requirements. If total cost is greater than 100, we set the discount and the, and the service charge uh, to unique values. Now, if none of these are true, if all of these are false, we need to make sure we use some default values uh, so that you know, let's say he orders one burger, for example. Uh, we don't want to say the cost is zero dollars and zero cents. The restaurant won't make any money that way, right? So this this condition here kind of applies uh, whenever uh, whenever we have you know a total cost that does not fall uh, in these lines here. So we've got four different uh, kind of unique states based on what the the total cost is calculated to be. So once once these four unique states create uh, unique values for discount and service charge, and we have our total cost, now we can use that within a, and, and create a formula, <clears throat> which is shown here in this last state, and actually create the real total cost, right? Because now, now we know the discount, now we know the service charge, we know the original total cost. We can use all of this in this formula. Um, you know, you guys are going to have... Uh, the formula is not going to be exactly like this, uh, but you guys should be able to come up with the tax formula easy enough using your own unique uh, variables here. Okay, <clears throat> so this is this is how you would would uh, this is basically how you would do your your calculate tax module flowchart, uh, very similar to this. Okay, since I have five minutes left, let me go over real quick the pseudocode. Um, all this pseudocode is uh, explained in your uh, in your book as far as how to declare variables. 
uh, in, in your readings, it shows you how to use uh, declare to declare variables within pseudocode. And remember, when you declare variables, uh, you always need to <clears throat> uh, state what data type it is. Is it an integer? Is it a float? Is it a string? Um, and your readings describe what all three of those are. But if you look at my IPO chart, uh, I've, already, I've, I've already outlined what number of burgers it needs to be. It needs to be an integer. Same with total cost, discount, and service charge. All three of those need to be floats. Uh, and if I look at my main module flow chart, I see that I need to enter in the number of burgers. And this is the correct... Uh, I think you can use print or you can use display. Uh, either either one of these is fine. Uh, but the key here is after you display this is you want to input the number of burgers. Once you uh, enter in the number of burgers, now you can uh, now you can calculate the total bill using another module, right? And then you're going to display the bill right remember the computers are sequential right so they were top down so when this program started the main module is always called first and it's gonna call it's gonna start at the top work its way down all the variables are declared hit this line it displays this to the user it's gonna input the number of burgers it's gonna hit this line where it cal calls calculate total total bills module this line is then gonna jump down to the actual calculate total bill module and in here you see all those conditional uh, logic statements and variables that we used in the flowchart and, and how you can set them using pseudocode. So if you notice, pseudoco pseudocode and, and the flowcharts are basically, basically the same thing, only flowcharts are in graphical form and pseudocode is more a, a specific syntax that we can translate to any programming language. I could take this, this pseudocode uh, listed here and convert it to C++, convert it to C, convert it to basic. So once you know pseudocode, um, that it's, it's very powerful because now you can take this pseudocode and translate it to whatever language you want. Okay, so that's why I really uh, want you guys to get to know the pseudocode really well. Uh, and this is this is how you use uh, conditional logic within uh, within the pseudocode. Okay, so that's that's the calculate total bill module in pseudocode. So um, if I'm going too fast for you guys, I want you to pause this presentation and, and really look at this pseudocode so that uh, you can implement it correctly in your assignment. All all pseudocode modules have have their declare have their name declared at the top, and then when the module is finished, you need to make sure you include an end tag. Same here, calculate total bill module and calculate total bill module. You always have an end tag um, for, for any of these modules. Same with the conditional logic. Here's an if statement. Where does this if statement end? Right here, end if, right? If, end if, if. So for any of these conditional logics or modules, you need to make sure you include the end tag. Uh, and then third, finally, so once the calculate total bill module is done, right, we're running in sequential order, it's going to come back here, and now it's going to run this statement called display bill module. Where's display bill module? Display bill module is here. So it jumps down here and now it basically prints out uh, the values of all these uh, variables that we've been using. Number of burgers, discount, service charge, total cost, uh, you know, and, and the user is going to be happy. He's going to see a nice detailed printout of, of everything that he's being charged for uh, and he's not going to complain to the manager. So, so that's always good. So there's the display bill module. Once this display bill module is, is done running, it's going to basically come back up here, right? And the main module ends, and that's it. The program's over. So you'd have to, in order to uh, calculate another bill, you'd have to run this program a second time, unless we had some sort of, you know, while loop in this main module. Would you like to take another order? Uh, but, you know, that's not here. Uh, so hopefully, that's part two. Uh, and hopefully you guys understand flowcharts and pseudocode uh, a lot better. If not, again, email me and let me know which part doesn't make sense.